Good morning, everybody. Thank you all for coming and attending this at our beautifully decorated Wilson Hall. Over a year ago, the Board of Trustees appointed a search committee comprised of 17 persons, including students, faculty, staff, and members of the board. The committee was chaired by my board colleague and friend, Henry Mercer. In the 14 months that followed, members of the committee spent countless hours designing the search, meeting with members of the campus community for input, and reviewing the credentials of candidates. I want to thank the members of the committee for their efforts, which come to fruition today with the appointment of Patrick F. Leahy as the 10th president of Monmouth University, effective August 1, 2019. We could not be better served and have someone of Dr. Leahy's talent and experience guiding Monmouth University forward. He is an outstanding leader with the qualifications and vision to help Monmouth University continue to flourish. And I want to introduce Search Committee Chairman Henry Mercer. Thank you, Chairman Plywick. Good morning, and thank you for coming. You know, it's always a great day to be a Monmouth Hawk, but today is extra special. I'd, I'd like to express my gratitude to everyone at the university who participated in the search process, and especially the members of the search committee. We held our first meeting more than a year ago, and now we're finally about to cross the finish line. Please be aware that this search for Monmouth's next president was national in scope. More than 100 individuals from around the United States expressed interest in the position. You should also know that the applicant pool was of extremely high quality, which speaks well for Monmouth University's reputation. President DeMana, my friend over there, I've never met anyone who loves this school more than you or has done so much for this school. We owe it to you to make the last months of your presidency happy and productive ones. When you retire this summer, you will have set a high bar for all presidents that follow. And we all know the sense of humor will never be surpassed. <laughs> And between you and me, also the beer selection at Doherty House. <laughs> Many thanks, Craig. You're the absolute best. It's my pleasure to participate in this historic ceremony this morning and share in the announcement that Monmouth University's Board of Trustees has unanimously elected Dr. Patrick F. Leahy, currently serving as president of Wilkes University, to be Monmouth's 10th, 10th president. The board is absolutely delighted that Dr. Leahy will be joining the Monmouth family, and his track record of impressive accomplishments throughout his life leads us confident that he is the ideal person to lead this wonderful school ever higher. So with that, I'm honored to introduce Pat Leahy, our president-elect. Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for assembling this morning. I, I understand fully that this event sits between you arriving this morning in your holiday party, so we will not make it uh, too long. But uh, I am thrilled this morning, thrilled to be named and introduced as the 10th president of Monmouth University. I want to begin by thanking a few people, if I may. 
And I want to start with Henry Mercer, the chair of the Presidential Search Committee, and all the members of the Presidential Search Committee that were so involved in this. They were extremely gracious in inviting me into the search, hearing me out, giving me a chance to make my case, treating me extremely fairly along the process, as I'm sure they did all the other candidates. And I am just delighted that uh, this day has come and I have emerged as the candidate. I want in a special way recognize the two student members on the Presidential Search Committee, Pooja Shaw and Matthew Yard. I don't know if they are, there, are here this morning, but every search committee, as you well know, needs to have students on it because the candidates like to get a sense, what are the kind of students that this institution serves? Are they the kind of students that you want to support? Are they the kind of students, frankly, that you want to fight for? And in Matthew and Pooja, it's clear that those are the kind of students that we have here at Monmouth. So I want to thank them for their service to their university. <laughs> It was a long, arduous process, and as Henry Mercer himself said, he gets his life back now. So <laughs> let me uh, thank the chair of the Board of Trustees, Mike Plodwick, the vice chair of the board, Gina Piscatelli, all the members of the Board of Trustees. You know, the most important thing to a Board of Trustees at any university or college is to try to find the right person to lead the institution. And for a board of this type that cares so deeply about the place, I can imagine what a serious endeavor that was. I am so grateful, Mike, that the board saw in me the right person to lead Monmouth University. I will do everything I can, everything I can in the years ahead to earn this. Thank you. And let me uh, say a word uh, to the current president, Gray Domena. As I understand it, Gray and his wife, Nancy, they were happily retired just a couple years ago. <laughs> After a lifetime of service to this university, Gray gets a call that the university that he loves needs him back one more time. And for the last couple years, Gray, you have created, as I can tell, extremely large shoes to fill. I want you to know I will do everything I can to fill them, and I hope I can count on your good counsel in the years to come. Thank you. So thank you all for the warm welcome. I'm really disappointed in a way this morning that uh, I am here alone. Typically, there would be no way I would come to a special moment like this in my life without my wife, Amy, of 23 years, and without my four kids, Grace, who's 20, Molly, who's 18, Jack, 14, and Brian, 12. But none of them could see fit to uh, leave their school obligations and to come here in New Jersey today. So you should be pleased to know, academics first in the Leahy family. <laughs> But if I'm candid with you, I'll share with you that my boys, Jack and Brian, the last couple of days they were lobbying, Dad, we should come with you. You do not want to do that alone. You need to have us there to support you. The Leahy men traveling to this new... And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, oh my gosh, what great kids I have. And what a good father I must be. And then I find out the real reason that they wanted to come here to New Jersey. They saw it as an opportunity to get out of two days of school. So I hope they're back home in school back in Wilkesbury. When things started to heat up in this search, we sat down with the kids uh, over Thanksgiving and we said, it's possible kids that we might make a move. We did not know at that point, but I said, it's possible. And so I sat them down and Amy and I, we explained the whole thing. We told them all about Monmouth, where, where it's located, what's so unique and special about the place, 
what opportunities that the university still has, why this is a great opportunity for their father, went through the whole spiel. And then I asked the kids, do you have any questions or concerns? And my daughter said, Dad, you had us at, it's located on the Jersey Shore. <laughs> So I can't tell you how excited the girls are in particular to move here to the Jersey Shore. The boys, on the other hand, it was quiet for a minute. And then my youngest son, Brian, said, did you tell me that the president has a golf cart? <laughs> so I want to alert the Monmouth University Police Department that there might be some reckless uh, golf cart driving in the years ahead. In all seriousness, we are, as a family, thrilled to be part of this effort and i want you to know that my family will become a big part of this monmouth community in the years to come let me just say a word or two in in answering questions that came up repeatedly during the search two questions in particular came up why monmouth and why now so i thought it might be helpful if i just share with you quickly a couple thoughts what was it about Monmouth that was so attractive to me? Well, like Wilkes University, Monmouth was founded in 1933, as you all well know. Founded as a junior college in the throes of the Great Depression to try to create academic opportunity for students who could not otherwise access, during that time, educational opportunities. And then this institution grew and expanded and evolved into a college and then a university and now a comprehensive master's university with plans, I think, in the future, perhaps to become a doctoral university as the industry continues to change. But during that time, one of the things that's most attractive to me is that you continue to make this first class private education as affordable as possible. 97% of the students at the undergraduate level are granted scholarship or grant aid. 33% of the students are eligible for Pell Grants. As I can calculate, up to 40% are the first in their families to pursue a four-year college degree. That is so attractive to me as an institution that is integrating access and excellence. But this institution has so much potential. To me, it is not the history of the place, it is the future of the place that is so attractive to me. The opportunities to take this university that all of you have built and make it not only a super regional, but a, indeed a national university is very attractive to me. And then the question, why now? The short answer is, I said to everyone, because the job's open now, that's why. <laughs> but let me just say, now is a challenging time in American higher education. I mean, you just need to look at any media outlet to know that people are questioning the value, they're worried about the demographics, the cost of education. There are challenges that we need to face as a university. And in my opinion, there's only one way to ensure that we not only survive, but thrive during these challenging times. And that is for every constituency of this university, faculty and staff, alumni, the board, of course, the administration, to work together. You see, I believe whatever you want to call it, shared governance or shared decision making or collaboration, that is the way in which universities will meet the challenges it faces and indeed thrive. And I look forward to doing that here at Monmouth University with all of you. I can't wait to get started as your president, but not until August 1st, because I have a current employer that I want to make sure I uphold my commitments to. But let me, if I may, close with a couple personal reflections. There are two people I'd like to remember today at this special moment in my life. And they're the two individuals that were most impactful in setting me on this course to become a university administrator. The first is Scott Pilars. Scott is the current president of the University of Scranton. Prior to that, he was the president of Georgetown Preparatory School, president of Marquette University, and he had a first stint at the University of Scranton where I worked with him. 
He is my mentor in higher education, and he gave me opportunities I probably did not deserve when I was at the University of Scranton. I learned so much from Scott, the most important of which is that we should always, always put students first. That's what I learned most from Scott Pilars. And then I'd like to remember in closing the late Tim Healy. Tim Healy was the president of my undergraduate institution. I had the incredible privilege of taking a class with Tim Healy as a freshman, a freshman poetry class. Tim Healy was a mountain of a man. He was 6'4", 300 pounds, could be gruff at times, but he would sit around the table with us students and he would recite from memory, of course, beautiful lines of poetry and it would bring him to tears. That's how much it moved him. So you can imagine the impact it had on me. At the end of that semester, I called my parents broke it to them that I was transferring from the School of Business to the College of Arts and Sciences from a marketing major to an English literature major. You can imagine I had some explaining to do. But it was, it was he who instilled in me an enduring commitment to the liberal arts and humanities. And I hope that we'll continue that legacy here at Monmouth. But the other thing that Tim Healy did as he illustrated for me for the first time in my life how important, how meaningful, how compelling the work as a university administrator could be. And I think that one class with that one person changed my life forever. So I'd like to remember Tim Healy today and leave you with something that he used to say about education. He said this, he said, the old teach and the young dream. And in that mystery comes a tomorrow that we who are older may never know, but will have helped to shape in the minds and hearts of our students. I look forward to collaborating with all of you, my new Monmouth colleagues, and helping to shape those tomorrows for our students. Thank you very much. <laughs> children and their willingness to sacrifice to come with you here, I was just thinking, Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, Jersey Shore, that's, that's not a tough choice. So in February of 2017, I started here as the ninth president of Monmouth University. I was loving my retirement. I highly recommend all of you, it's the best job ever. <laughs> and despite the fact that I was loving my retirement, I love Monmouth more. And so I came back. because Monmouth needed help. And I was willing to do that. And I have to say that in coming back, I had a wonderful time. I had wonderful support from all of you. We have done amazing things in a little short of two years in terms of moving this institution forward, getting it back on track, getting it to where it needs to be and where it needs to go. 
we have made tremendous strides and that is due to the support and the help and the hard work of everybody in this room as well as people who aren't here in this room. And as the president for another seven months and a few days, um, you know, I hope and I know that I can have your support to continue moving this institution in the direction it needs to go because we are not going to just start coasting now. We are going to continue pushing forward. We're going to continue to move this place forward because I told, the, as I told the trustees when they asked me to be president, that my role and my goal was to move this institution as far as possible in a positive direction so when the next president came in, he or she would have a, a, a wonderful springboard to move the institution even further. And I have to say that um, in the short time that I've known Pat and talked to Pat, I don't think the board could have made a finer choice in selecting him to be the next president. You hear him speak today, you hear him talk about students come first, which is the Mammoth way, and which is my mantra that I've always told you all. Um, I, it's clear he gets Mammoth. Uh, he's a very talented individual, and I am very pleased to leave this university in his hands because I know he is going to do a fabulous job of continuing the upward trajectory of this institution. And he will come in the years ahead to know and love the Monmouth family as I have. And uh, I do stand ready, Pat, to help you in any way that you need in order to assist as long as I don't have to wear a tie. <laughs> so, um, you know, we have uh, several months ahead. Um, those of you who may or may not know, we have formed a transition team uh, to help with the transfer of uh, power in an orderly fashion. We don't want any coups or anything like that. Um, and that transition team, I'm a, I will introduce the members of that team uh, shortly, but um, you know, we uh, hope to do a lot of work in the next seven months to uh, make sure that transition of power is smooth and uh, that Mama continues without a, you know, a misstep or faltering in any way. Um, so let me introduce uh, the two chairs of the transition team and I'm assuming that they're somewhere in the audience even though I don't see them. Ah, there we go. Uh, the two chairs, um, before I introduce them, I will say that uh, the transition team is made up of a broad representation of uh, the university. We have students, we have faculty, we have administrators. Um, I think every division is represented, but uh, the two people who are leading the transition team, Robin Mama, Dean of the School of Social Work, and Rich Veit, who's chair of the History and Anthropology Department, two uh, individuals everyone here knows very well and respects and admires greatly because they do great work here. So I will introduce them at this time and I look forward to working with you all over the next seven months and at some point uh, maybe we'll have a party and uh, celebrate. So thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we also would like to join our colleagues in welcoming Dr. Patrick Leahy, our president-elect to Monmouth University. And Dr. Veit and I are, are quite honored to be able to co-chair this presidential transition team. Uh, as President Domena mentioned, the team is comprised of individuals from a cross-section of our campus community. And our charge is to not only welcome and transition Dr. Leahy here to Monmouth, but also to celebrate the accomplishments of our current president, Greg Mena.
As Robin said, we are very honored to be undertaking this task for the university. And Pat, that was a brilliant presentation. Thank you for that. Uh, the transition team will be scheduling a variety of opportunities for members of the university community to meet with President-elect Leahy over the spring semester, though he has a current job, and into the summer and the fall. And our goal is to provide sufficient opportunities for all of the major constituencies at the university to meet with our incoming president. We welcome your thoughts and encourage you to directly contact either Dean Mama or me with any suggestions about this process. Thanks in advance for your assistance with what we see as a very important task. Welcome to Monmouth University, Dr. Leahy. We look forward to working. So um, what we're going to do here uh, is uh, end the festivities in terms of speaking. Uh, there are, I believe there are some refreshments, uh, and we can mingle. And uh, Pat, I just want you to know that you know, we have this party here. We have the party in the afternoon. This is normal mom at like <laughs> we, we just party all the time. So. So it's typical Mammoth Day, just party, party, party. Um, those of you who are coming to the afternoon uh, employee holiday party, um, I have a special holiday tie I'll be wearing. I was very proud of it until I saw David Ford over there, who is a walking billboard for holiday spirit. So I'm not sure I'm gonna kind of match up, David, but, you know, maybe you let me wear your hat a little bit or something. So anyway, thank you very much for coming. Again, thank you for your support for me, for, for Pat. Um, we can mingle until uh, 10.32 and then back to work. All right, thank you.